I will be teaching you how you can set up an integration between Loopy Loyalty and a survey tool to automatically give stamps to your customers when they fill out a feedback form. It's a really, really cool user experience and it's another way for you to collect feedback. So what we need for this is three components. We need Loopy Loyalty, we need a uh, form tool to collect the feedback and then we need Zapier, which is the glue that binds it all together. Zapier is a platform for you to connect apps together. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to say when a submission comes in in job form, then give a stamp in Loopy Loyalty. Now, I use job form because I really like it. It's super simple to use. The pricing is very reasonable, but feel free to use any other tool that you use like Typeform or SurveyMonkey. I haven't tested with those tools. I know that there's some functionality in job form that we need in order for this to work. So we need to, for example, be able to pass parameters into the form via the URL so that we can pass in the Loopy Loyalty customer ID to the form. If that functionality is available for the other two tools that I just mentioned, then you can use those as well. But in this case, we're using top form. I have already set up a loyalty card in here. And if we go to my card design under details, this is where I'm going to be putting the form link to leave feedback. So details, useful links at the bottom, and that's where my leave feedback link goes. Now let's have a quick look at the form. I've already designed this beautiful form and you can see it's the same design as my card, very orangey and with my beautiful logo. So I wanted to keep the styling the same, super easy to do with job form, just toss your logo in and select the theme that you wanna use. In this case here, I'm gonna be collecting very basic data. It's just feedback type and describe your feedback. You can make this form however you want, just for the sake of this demo, I keep it very light. Now, the important thing that you do need to put in there for it to work is the customer ID field. And this is a hidden field. And if we click on this and we go to properties, then you can hide the field by going to advanced and then go to the bottom and say hide. This field we are going to populate via the, the URL when somebody clicks on it, because this is going to contain the Loopy Loyalty customer ID. And we need that because in Zapier, when we connect it all together, we need to know which card to stamp, right? So this is ultimately the unique customer identifier from Loopy Loyalty. Now, in order for us to build the correct URL, we need to get the field details here. And here we can say unique name is customer ID. And this is what we need to use in the URL. So let's get to the URL building part so we can hook it all up. If we go to publish, then this gives you the URL of your form. So you can copy this and I'm quickly gonna open up my text editor here. And we now need to make sure that we add the customer ID to this URL. And that's basically the URL that we put in the past. So with web URLs, you can add data to it by question mark, and then you can start listing the data that you wanna pass along. So I use the unique name of the field that we just saw, which is customer ID and equals. Now in Loopy Loyalty, we have the ability for you to pass dynamic data into links. It's just super secret. It's not something we've documented, but you can by doing the hashtag curly bracket open, curly bracket close, and the field name goes in here. Now, in this case, the field name that we need is called PID, which is the code for the customer ID in Loopy Loyalty. So if I copy and paste this, and I put this in my Loopy Loyalty leave feedback link here, then at runtime, this variable will be replaced with the unique customer ID for the Loopy pass of that customer. That's all we need to do. You can pass additional data in as well here. So if you would, for example, wanna pass in the name, from here, then you could use the same logic as I just did, just replace the, the PID with the, the name field. But I'm not recommending you make this super complicated, like the more stuff you put in the links, there's also the more points of failure if you don't do correctly. Just stick with simplicity, put the customer ID in there, then you're ultimately gonna get that customer ID back in Jot form, and you could link it all back together by just downloading your customers from Loopy Loyalty, which will have the customer ID in there, and then uh, cross-referencing it with the feedback that you get from Jot form if, if you wanna do that. The one other thing to do is we want to make sure, or I would recommend at least that you make sure that you turn unique submissions on. Given the fact that we're giving someone a stem for completing the form, we don't want someone to, you know, give feedback a hundred times and get a hundred stems. Under settings, and if you click on so form settings and then go to show more options, then there is a section here for unique submission and unique questions. 
Now, unique submission uses cookie and IP address. And for the ones of you that don't know what a cookie is or an IP address, a cookie is ultimately some kind of file that a website can leave behind on your computer to leave data about your visit. So it basically can track if you already visited the website before. And then the IP address is just your unique address on how you identify yourself on the internet. So given the fact that I'm doing uh, the demo from my laptop here, I'm gonna leave this off for now. Uh, because it would trigger for me because I've been playing around with the forum for a couple of hours now. In your case, you could turn this on cookies and IP for production mode to really get that extra check in there for uniqueness, but I'll, I'll leave it off for now. What I will turn on is the unique question here. This is custom ID. What this means is that someone with the custom ID can only submit it once. And since people don't know that we have this as a hidden field, this should already be enough kind of security to prevent it because even if somebody changes the customer ID, they're not going to get the stems because it's their unique identifier. So unless somebody gets multiple cards, they would be able to get a stamp on every card, but that's it. So doing it on this is, is secure enough. Uh, let's leave that there. We got our form set up. We got our link set up. We got our link copied into the, the link section here. So that leaves one piece to be resolved, which is we need to connect it all together. Let's go to Zapier. I'm not going into too much detail on how to use Zapier. There's some excellent tutorials out there that they already have. Ultimately, what it does is it allows us to connect job form together to Loopy Loyalty. Let's click on Make Zap. And it's now asking us what the trigger is. So what's the entry point into this flow? We're going to look for job form. There it is. And the event that we want to trigger our action off is a new submission. So whenever somebody submits the form, continue, choose the account. I already have my account in here. If you don't, then you will be asked to just authenticate and connect. And then the trigger. So what form do we want to trigger this from? We want to trigger this from the feedback form. Test. And we can see some recent data here. This is just test data, by the way. So it's not going to be known in my account. So we just continue with that. Now, what do we want the action to be? So what do we want to do with this data? We want to take that data to Loopy Loyalty. And what do we want to do in Loopy Loyalty? There's a couple of things we can do. But in this case, we want to add a stamp. Then I need to connect my Loopy Loyalty account. So this is the one I was just using for that. Again, this is already in here because I've used this before. If you haven't used Zapier here before, you're gonna be asked to provide your credentials and connect. It's gonna continue. Now we can have the action. So we need the customer ID. Click, this shows us all the data from the first step from the action that triggers it. And here should be a customer ID field because that's what we set up in our form. There we go, customer ID. Now, this isn't a real customer. This is not going to be found in my Loopy Loyalty account. And number of stamps in this case. I want to give one stamp, but you can give more. You can give two, three, four, five, whatever you want. And then continue. We're going to skip the test because I know that this is not a real customer. So the test would fail because it can't be found in Loopy Loyalty. So we're skipping this. And now let's turn on the zap. It's important you turn it on. If you don't turn it on, it's not gonna work. And then we probably wanna give it a name. Name your zap, job form into loopy loyalty. Now, one thing to know with Zapier, there is two types of zaps in Zapier. There is instant zaps and there's polling zaps. This particular zap with job form is a polling zap. And what that means is that Zapier will pull the data from job form every couple of minutes that every couple of minutes depends on the plan that you're on with Zapier. I'm on the free plan, which means that it pulls every 15 minutes. That means it's not going to be instant, right? So when I fill out the form, it can take up to 15 minutes for my stem to arrive. It just depends on when Zapier picks it up. If you're on the more premium plans, then I believe this goes down all the way to a minute. So that would be almost instant. It's something to just at least make your customers aware of or put some text in the form that says you'll receive a stamp within the next hour. So whatever you want to do, just keep that in mind. So when you're testing and when you're setting this up that you don't get your customers going, oh, hey, I filled out your feedback form. I didn't get my stamp yet. 
you can see errors and logs in here on the right, by the way. So if you do get questions from your customers and say, I didn't get my stamp or, you know, it's not been processed, see if there was something wrong or see if you saw it come through the ZEP history, which shows you all the records that have flown through here. So that's your first way to go when you're debugging something like this. There is also ways to manually run the ZEP. So if you go here and you click on this little carrot, you can also say run ZEP. So that means that SAP will run it right away and pull all the data in. ZEP's on, it's working. Let's enroll ourselves as a customer. So for this, I'm going to be sharing my mobile screen because I want to show you some other cool stuff. There we go, that's my phone. I'm gonna enroll, I'm just gonna scan this QR code here. This is my actual phone, camera, scan. That won't work. Cool, let's pull up the enrollment form, fill this out. I'm not gonna put my number of birthday, it's not mandatory. Join now. Now, what I wanted to show you, and I'm just gonna put my phone to the side. So let me just click add here. Let's say you have existing customers or people that might not know about your feedback thing. We can also notify our customers to let them know that there is some survey to be filled out so some message like that there we go send let me just put this in lock screen mode and then we should see a message popping up here shortly there we go hey guys we've had a feedback survey so i'm going to click that authenticate my card comes up I go to the back of the card and I'm going to click the leave feedback link. This takes me to the form. And let's say I have a suggestion, submit feedback. Now, as I said, this is not going to be instant. So I'm just going to put my phone in sleep mode for a bit. We can also see here that this is my customer record. You can see that I haven't earned any stamps yet. So that means the ZEP hasn't run yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into ZEP here and I'm just going to run it manually. Click on the little carrot here and say run ZEP. So it's triggered on one new item. And there we go. If I unlock my phone, we can now see that my stamp came through. There we go. Nine more stamps until free coffee. See, it works really nicely. And now I've got my stamp. Cool. Let's just make sure I can't fill it out again. So if we click on the link again and I'll go through it all. And I'll submit it. It says, sorry, only one entry is allowed. So I'm not going to get another, you know, another submission come in. That's that. Hopefully that's helpful and inspires you to build some cool surveys. And I really believe this will be very helpful for your business because people are willing to leave feedback if they get rewarded for it. So this helps you to improve your business or get good feedback from your customers that you can then act and respond on. Thanks for your time.